Thank you. Time for some trending now. As anchors and reporters, we've all experienced challenges while doing live shots out in the field, and that's magnified when it's dark outside. So let's take a look at a Memphis reporter uh -huh. who was startled in the middle of a report. Pride and joy, and that's what community members told me how they want to be represented. Now they're looking to do some more work here. They're one. Ah! <laughs> Honey, what you want? What happened? Um, excuse me. Do you know? Where this um, girl is? I don't. Okay, thank you. What girl? She's like a little girl. I don't. I don't. You scared me, honey. Don't do that no more. Okay. Just say, uh, excuse me. <laughs> girl, you scared me. Was that, that a live terrible. shot or she was recording it? I don't know. I'm assuming maybe she was just yeah. recording yeah. it. But oh my gosh, talk about like heart attack. It's like, what is that oh, little kid doing out in the dark anyway? What girl? <laughs> it just got caught. Oh, my goodness. I think he just wanted to talk. Have you seen that girl? Like, I think he yeah, just wanted to yeah, talk to her, but yeah. she was so scared. She was so funny because she instantly went from, like, we are here to it. Yeah, like, don't TV do that voice. no more. A <laughs> TV voice. She lost her real quick. <gasps> oh, that was good. She just wanted to be on TV. Yeah. <laughs> They succeeded. We're showing yeah, them. Yeah. All right, guys. U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall actually got in the cockpit of a fighter jet last week that he wasn't controlling. It was flown by artificial intelligence. What? The flight happened over the desert in California. The AI technology flew him in maneuvers reaching over 550 oh. miles per hour. It was an hour long flight. After that flight, he said, quote, it's a security risk not to have it. At this point, we have to have it talking about the AI technology. Mm -hmm. He also said he saw enough to trust that technology in deciding whether to fire weapons during a war. Some of the appeals, of course, cost cutting, and I assume it's to save human lives as well. Wow. That's a good assumption. <laughs> Wow. Thanks. Yeah, but Thank you, so much is computerized on, on planes now. Yeah. I know, but so. I can't believe he, for an hour, he yeah. was up there just, just you know, well, no control. He, he yeah. lived to tell. I guess that's kind of <laughs> yeah. what we do, right, when we get on a plane. <laughs> and I guess the future, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We have no control. Yeah. yeah. I guess the future is now, it seems. How would you like to feel like RoboCop when you're on a hike? Um, <laughs> I'd like to have RoboCop with me. Oh, there's yeah. a new high-tech exoskeleton designed to assist with hiking. It's called the X1, and it's from Chinese startup Dancis. You strap it on your waist and thighs, and it upgrades your anatomy. Gives you about the same torque as you'd find at a mid-range e-bike. The power is sent directly to your legs through a 10-mode adaptive co-pilot powered by AI, which through machine learning, it can actually adapt and anticipate your moves. The company claims you can carry a stuffed hiking backpack and barely notice it. It tops speeds of nearly 17 miles per hour using a boost mode. And there's also a mode for running downhill that helps your knees. The company's currently in the crowdfunding process. Early backers can get one for $399, half of the eventual price. Wait. Yeah, the first batch expected in July. Will we do nothing on our own anymore? I know. <laughs> but you're still doing it, right? Or yeah, but it just like... It's assisting like an electric bike, you know? Yeah. Instead of biking, yeah, the bike. Interesting. Yeah. I would okay. love to try it. We'll explain after. All right. I mean, I get... Stop. Leave me alone. It's not...